everyone, I hope you're all doing well today and welcome back to our simulator tutorial series. Now today we're going to be running over the, the basics of uh, taking off and landing. Uh, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running this through with a few different aircraft. Uh, mainly because obviously taking off and landing in one plane can be very different from another. So we're going to go over some easy planes, some difficult planes. And we're also going to look at bombers and jets as well, just so that you understand the best way to take off, regardless of what tier you're playing and if you're new to sim. So to start everything off today, we're going to take out the Hurricane Mark 1 late. Uh, it's a very entry level aircraft in the British tree. My number one recommendation for new sim pilots as well. It's incredibly stable. It's a great gun platform and overall, I just love it. It's still one of my favorite planes even now. So we'll take it for a quick test of flight. And make sure we have everything set up for simulator mode. Yes, we do. And we'll run through the basics of takeoff and landing. Now, when it comes to taking off, it does help if you, your engine is uh, on. Obviously, the first thing you want to do is uh, uh, switch on your engine with your ignition key. By default, I believe that is still the I key, although that may have changed. And the other thing you want to make sure is that your uh, takeoff flaps are deployed. Uh, otherwise, your aircraft will take considerably longer to get off the ground. Now, uh, the biggest problem that new players encounter with taking off in an aircraft is something called P-Factor. And there's a long, slightly complicated explanation of what P-Factor is on Wikipedia, but I'm going to break it down into simple terms. Basically, your propeller is spinning. That exerts a force on your aircraft, and depending on what way your propeller spins, be it clockwise or anti-clockwise, it's going to pull your aircraft to the left or to the right as you sort of pull off at the beginning of your takeoff, because whilst your aircraft is at a high angle of attack, as in the nose is still pointing up, this P-factor can have quite a strong effect on uh, the aircraft itself, and can get you in a lot of trouble if you don't know how to combat it. Now to combat it, you need to use rudder input. So if the aircraft is being pulled to the left, you need to give it a bit of right hand rudder. If it's being pulled to the right, you need to give it a bit of left hand rudder. Now P factor is different for each aircraft. Uh, for the Hurricane, it's pretty, pretty tame. I'll show you quickly by just throttling up and not touching the, uh, the, the rudder here. Take it up to about 70, 80% and see how it's being pulled to the left yeah so that's a that's p factor so it's pretty tame on the hurricane on a oh dear i broke my propellers <laughs> that's the other thing you got to be careful of is uh slowing down your aircraft is very likely to nose over and that is slightly embarrassing for me but yeah so that's basically p factor in a nutshell um it pulls your aircraft to the to the left in the case of the hurricane and uh, you know in the case of other aircraft it may pull it to the right if their propeller is spinning in the other direction so what we'll do now is we'll run through a basic takeoff so we'll throttle up to about 80 percent or thereabouts we'll give it a bit of right hand rudder just so that we don't get pulled and what we're going to do is we're just going to keep accelerating until the aircraft begins on its own to naturally level out like so and then you can just very carefully just pull up on the stick and you are in the air and obviously now you want to uh, pull up your landing gear uh, and in this case we'll also pull up the landing flaps as well now with certain aircraft you want to leave the landing flaps engaged for a bit longer now you notice there the aircraft dips when you um, uh, retract your landing flaps because you're obviously losing a bit of uh, lift from that so just be careful especially if you're flying in an aircraft with ordnance that can catch you out and that's the essence of take off in a hurricane, basically very simple. And uh, what we'll do now, uh, we'll skip ahead to the landing approach and I'll run you through a quick uh, landing feature. Uh, now something I do want to point out real quickly, um, I, I know I am doing this tutorial in VR, but basically no matter what your peripherals are, whether or not you have just the screen or if you have head tracking or mouse tracking or VR like me, um, all, all of the principles are going to be the same, just the advantage of VR, you know, you, you get a bit more visibility in the cockpit, which does make um, taking off and landing, you know, easier because you are, um, you know, you've, you've just got that extra uh, peripheral vision you can use. And um, the other downside of recording this in VR is uh, when I turn my head, I'm obviously not facing the microphone, so I'm trying my best to face the microphone here. 
Um, anyway, back to back to landing. Obviously, to uh, land the aircraft successfully, you need to do well two things to start off with. You need to a lose altitude and b lose airspeed, which is something that we need to do. So we're going quite fast at the moment. So I'm going to just throttle all the way down to zero, and we're going to line up with the runway. Obviously, helps a lot. So. Uh, Try your best, if possible, to obviously get lined up with the runway a fair, a fair distance off from the airfield itself. Having to make last minute corrections is not ideal. However, you know, there are certain situations, certain combat situations, if you're being tailed by an enemy, where you might need to take a slightly riskier approach. Uh, now, we can drop our landing gear at around 220 kilometers an hour. You can drop it a bit faster than that, but I like to keep it nice and slow. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, we're also going to deploy our landing flaps. I personally don't land with flaps, that's just a personal preference for me. However, uh, landing with flaps is technically the safest way to do it because it gets you to the slowest speed. As you can see here, we are at a crawl, we're at 150 kilometers an hour and dropping. Uh, and we're going to keep the throttle up at around 50 until we've essentially just touched down on the ground very gently, just pull the nose up a tiny bit and we'll throttle down just as we're down. Yeah, and um, we are down, there we go, and we're going to apply brakes. Now you may need to apply and then take your feet off the brake here and there because you will nose over and break your propeller, which is obviously, you know, uh, not good for the plane, not good for yourself either. And we have basically come to a complete stop here, and that is how you land in the Hurricane. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, as I said, this is uh, my recommendation for new pilots because it is so forgiving. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, hop into some more interesting aircraft, and I'll run you through some of uh, <laughs> some of their quirks, as I say. So let's uh, let's go do that. Now the next thing I want to show you guys is an aircraft that has uh, a fair amount more P factor than the Hurricane, and in this case we're going to go with the uh, German BF 109, specifically the F4, just because I like it. Uh, now these planes have a considerably uh, higher P factor. Um, now, I believe that that is a case of the fact that they are a much more compact airframe and they have a much more powerful engine. So you've got a lot of torque in a very light you know, body, basically. So, we'll do as we normally do, engine on and um, deploy flaps. What I'm going to do again is just throttle up and not touch the rudder, and I'll just show you what the P-factor on this is like. And straight away, it is uh, very very aggressive and uh, it's almost impossible to pull out like to pull it back around to the right again so yeah you don't want to get caught out by that by just throttling straight up to 100 and um, trying to gun it down the runway because it isn't going to work and it's just going to end in a uh, fireball essentially so what we are going to do is uh, run through a demonstration of how to take off properly in the 109 this is what we're going to do now so basically the, the Easiest way to do it is throttle up to between 70 and 80% throttle. Um, keep the right rudder on, but not all the way because there you can apply too much rudder and shoot off to the right. You just got to balance it out. But the biggest thing is just don't throttle up all the way. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. See, look, the rudder's holding it. It's pulling around a bit more to the right. There we go. Now that we've got it on the straight, we can afford to throttle it up a, way, a wee bit more. And ideal takeoff speed. Um, I found is around between 150 to 175 kilometers an hour, which you can actually see on the dashboard here. Um, and I'm pulling off at about 200. And the handy thing with the uh, with the German aircraft for me is the dashes uh, do record speed in kilometers an hour as opposed to knots, uh, because I do use the metric system. Um, I just find it easier. And that's taking off in the 109. Um, landing is not difficult in this plane, so we're not going to run through that. Uh, we're going to run through another aircraft that is quite difficult to take off as well from the German tree, and that is the uh, Focke Wolf 190. So let's hop into that now. Now uh, the the 190 that I'm in uh, today is the A5, uh, one of my favourites again, but it's also one of the ones that I, I personally had the most trouble with when I was a new pilot. Um, the, the later Focke Wolves I just found slightly easier to take off when this this one was always the uh, uh, the devil for me. Now this one doesn't have too much p-factor, in fact none of the 190s seem to for whatever reason for me. The biggest mistake that new players make when taking off on a 190 is they try and take off uh, before they've reached 
the appropriate airspeed and you really really don't want to take off in this any slower than 180 uh, 180 kilometers an hour because I'm going to show you why uh, so we're going to get up to about 100 120 and then I'm going to try and pull up and show you what happens if you try and take off at absolute minimum airspeed all right so we're pulling up on the stick pulling up on the stick and boom there we go we've gone uh, over to the left uh, because of the P factor in a way and uh, broken the aircraft um, now I'm going to take back what I said earlier the the Focke Wolf does have a lot of P factor but it affects it in a different way than the the 109 so the 109 will pull it off to the right the Focke Wolf will basically want to roll over it'll want a corkscrew essentially uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take off properly throttle up I can basically get away with throttling straight to 100 because I just know how to do it now keep an eye on my speedo, and I'm not going to pull off until we're at about 200 kilometers an hour. And then let it nose over nice and gently as we approach 150. Keep it nice and level. Obviously, don't want it uh, nosing into the ground. Okay, we're just at 200 now, so we can pull off. And look, there we go. Now the plane does still want to roll a little bit, so you do need you will be fighting it a little bit here. Um, but once it's up, it's 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 nice and nice and easy. Um, now there is one thing to bear in mind with the 190 is the uh, the P factor when you're landing. Um, when you're about to approach the runway and say you're at about 30% throttle or 20% throttle and your feet away from touching down, if you cut your throttle to zero immediately the plane will roll over a decent amount to the right because all of that torque that you've been fighting is gone and it's going to roll over to the right. So uh, my uh, suggestion is when you're landing with the 190, do not cut throttle until your wheels are firmly on that runway. Um, otherwise, it's going to be difficult. Not impossible, um, just difficult, uh, unless you are a skilled pilot. So just a word of caution for that one. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do taking off and landing in a heavy bomber. And for this, we're going to take the, uh, the, the old school... Uh, the big daddy, the B-17. So uh, let's uh, get it in test flight. Sim, perfect. Now, with the uh, bombers in the game, uh, even though there is uh, not just one engine on the nose, you've got a few on each wing, uh, you can still get P-factor affecting your aircraft. So, um, you know, depending on uh, your engine setup with your bombers, it's either going to pull a bit to the left or to the right. And some of them pull a fair amount. Um, I was surprised that the B-17, if you watch here, if I just throttle up, it's, it's already pulling to the left quite quite a bit, so you've got to um, counteract that now. With the bombers, you do want to take off at full throttle, especially if you're laden with bombs, which I am, and you're basically going to be using a fair amount of this runway to get off the ground. Now, you're going to want to wait for the nose to level out like we are here. We're getting to 160, 170. Okay, 180, we can get away with pulling up on the stick very gently and clearing the ground. The last thing you want to do is pull too hard, stall out, and then crash in a embarrassing fireball of uh, wasted opportunities and salted tears. Now, you've noticed here that I have not yet pulled up my landing flaps. That is for good reason. You want to get a bit more altitude before you um, pull those flaps in because um, you can sometimes uh, nose down a wee bit. So now that we're up a, a, a fair bit, I can... Retract the flaps and look, see it's brought the nose over a bit. That's uh, something just to bear in mind. And what we're going to do now is we're going to skip ahead, uh, theoretically bomb our target, and I'm going to run you through how to land in a heavy bomber. Okay, so we're coming up for our landing approach, and now with bombers especially, you want to get lined up a fair distance out, or at least, or at least, you know, vaguely so, like I have here. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, these things take a long time to slow down. So if you find you're getting close to the runway and you're still going quite fast, if your bomber has combat flaps, I strongly suggest you use them. Because these big buses take a long time to slow down, and in enduring confrontation games, don't get a massively long runway a lot of the time, so you want to use every inch of that asphalt you can. Now, at around 260, you can bring down your landing gear. Do that a fair distance away from the runway again because it does take time for these landing gears to come down. They're big, they're heavy, they're not small and nimble like you have on a fighter. Okay, so we're down. We're going to switch out to combat uh, to landing flaps. And oh dear, our bombs have just respawned inside our bomb base. That's given us a few extra tons worth of weight to counteract, but there we go. It's a nice landing exercise. 
You want to bring it down nice and gentle. Watch out for any trees. And there we go. Bit of a bump. And then you want to slam on those brakes. So landing in a bomber is actually quite easy. Um, provided you just line up a long way away and you get low. You get very low. Um, you can't come in at a sharp angle to land at an airfield with a bomber as you can with a fighter because you just won't lose that speed and you're going to nose into the ground. Okay, so uh, for the final uh, demonstration of this video, we're going to be taking off in the uh, F-4 Phantom, the British one today. Uh, now, the important thing to bear in mind with this aircraft is when you take off, uh, go at a very shallow angle of attack. Because the, uh, the tail of this aircraft sits quite far back um, off the, the center of mass and uh, center of thrust, it can strike the runway quite easily. You will tail strike and a damaged tail is going to really compromise your ability to fly this thing, which is something you don't want to have happen. Uh, it's the first thing that happened to me when I took off in this jet for the first time was I tail striked. So we'll throttle up and the best way is just to build up as much speed as you can and then very gently pull up. You don't want to yank on the stick. You just want to go real gentle. I think that's going to be good enough speed. And we'll just pull up. See, there we go, because it really wants the nose up, as you can tell here. You want to gear up and flap up really quick, otherwise you're going to rip your gears and rip your flaps. There we go, that's basically uh, taking off in the Phantom. Now, uh, if I pulled on the stick any harder than that, I probably would have tail striked and damaged the plane. And, uh, you know, it'll still get up in the air, but it's, it's going to be a real pain in the backside to fly. Um, now landing in um, a lot of jets in uh, War Thunder is going to require the use of your air brakes. Most jets in the game have air brakes, some of the earlier jets don't, but almost all of the later uh, jets in the game do have air brakes. So we're going to extend that now just to bleed off some speed as we get lined up here with the runway, because you don't want to be going in doing a uh, 1000 kph. You want to drop your speed down considerably, and we'll retract that off. And we'll get lined up here a bit more. Are we picking up speed again? Yes, we are. Okay, we're going to reopen that air brake. So it's a bit of a balancing act between basically slowing down, but also um, maintaining enough airspeed to keep the um, keep the aircraft stable. Basically, now I just turned off my uh, control damping there, uh, which is a, a, a stability assist system that the uh, F4 gets. Basically, makes it easier to fly. Going to retract the air brake just so that we uh, don't have too much drag. Going to pop it again quickly. Landing gear. And we're down on our nose. Excellent. Now, the thing you need to do is extend your air brake and then also open your chute. That will slow you down a lot. There we go, see? Boom. And that way you're not going to overrun your runway, which is probably what's going to happen if you didn't have a drogue chute on this aircraft. You know, landing at 400 and so kilometers an hour, the brakes are only going to work so well in slowing you down. So, um, yeah, so that's basically landing the F4 in a nutshell as well. Um, it does take a bit of getting used to. I crashed, I think, on the first three or four times I tried landing this just because I wasn't really used to the angle of attack. You do you do get a lot of vertical uh, speed coming down to landing, so it is quite a hard bump sometimes. You've got to be mindful of you know maintaining enough forward momentum so that you don't just drop out the sky like a stone, because this is a big jet. It's a heavy it's a heavy beast. It is going to fall out the sky if you cut all throttle. So yeah, that's basically uh, landing in the F4 Phantom and, and taking off and landing in general. So I'm really hoping you guys found this video informative. Now, I didn't go off a script on this one. This is all um, on the cusp, as you can probably probably tell. Um, I just thought it'd be easier to actually do this on the fly because I can sort of comment on different aircraft behaviors as we go. If there's a particular tutorial you are looking for, feel free to leave a uh, comment down below. 
Um, I'm, I'm really glad that these videos are um, getting popular and people are finding them helpful. It is nice. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that more people are getting into sim as well, um, especially with a, a lot of people being stuck at home at the moment. Uh, you know, if you've been thinking about trying trying out sim for the first time, you've, you've got plenty of time to do it. So I'm hoping everyone out there is staying safe as well. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to end the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. See ya.